Hello, welcome back to the channel. It's day two at Gigrim Farm. Uh, we came yesterday, beautiful blue skies. Um, it was red hot in the hide, we, you know, we were in t-shirts. Twenty-four hours later, it couldn't be any different. It's throwing it down with rain. It's not particularly warm, um, and we're definitely going to get a very different experience than we did yesterday. We were in the low-level hide yesterday, and today we're in the uh, big tower hide. So we should be up high, photographing down on the birds. What are your thoughts, pops? Uh, well, it's going to be a challenge, isn't it, in this weather? Um, but yesterday was a challenge in the low-level hide. Um, I thought it was quite difficult photographing in there. This will be totally different. Yeah, it should be. It's quite open, so you don't have the, the roof over the top of you, which is just what you need when it's uh, raining hard. Um, <laughs> so, but it does mean that you can track the birds coming in. And the other thing as well is while we were getting shots of the, the kites as they were inverting and diving, uh, quite often it was a white background because they were up in the sky because we were shooting up. Um, today we should be above them as they're doing that, which should create that nice diffused background uh, and probably a little bit of a, of a more pleasing photograph than the, the clear white photograph. Mm. Um, but as you can probably hear, it is throwing it down. And it's forecast to do this all the way to five o'clock. So um, no point complaining about it. It is what it is. We'll mm. just have to make the most of it. So come along for the journey and see what we see. So we're in Tower Hyde, not Big Tower Hyde. Uh, I, got it conf I got it mixed up, we were in Tower Hyde, which is the first one. It's still an elevated position looking down onto the field. A very different experience to uh, what we were in last time. I'm just gonna show you what I mean by it's open. I'm not going out there because it's absolutely throwing it down, uh, but it's open so you can track the birds from above. And then we've got this little bit of a sheltered section towards the back. Um, just to help with that, I've got, uh, although my camera is completely water seal, sealed, um, the professional lens, professional camera, so you know they can be used out in the rain, but I've got a waterproof cover over the top of mine just to give it a little bit of protection. And today I'm going to predominantly be using the, the 500mm. When I reviewed my, my images um, from yesterday, um, I, I felt that the, the 500mm shots were probably the stronger shots of the two. Although I do run the risk of clipping wings, um, I think that you, you get more of a chance of filling the frame, less opportunity to have to crop in. So I'm going to be starting off with the 500mm. I'm going to have my 70 to 200 in the background just in case, but I don't think I'm going to be switching. Um, Pops has gone for his uh, 500 pf. Is that yeah. right today? Yeah, my 500 PF with me uh, Z100 to 400 as my backup lens just in case. But reviewing reviewing the um, the images from yesterday, I think I can afford to go to a 500. And then, obviously, the most important thing that we've also got is a pork pie and an apple. You've got to keep your stamina up. It is a workout photographing these kites. Thought we'd just spend. Uh, just a couple of minutes talking about settings, things that we learnt from yesterday um, and things that we're going to put into practice today. Now obviously the first thing is it's a different day to yesterday, completely different conditions, um, thick heavy cloud and it's throwing it down with rain. Um, so we're not going to be using the same settings as we were yesterday are we? No, definitely not. I mean my biggest concern yesterday was uh, clipping highlights and, and overexposing for the white on the wings of the mm. red kite yeah. and so as a result of that I um, used my exposure compensation and I, I underexposed by nearly a full stop actually on, on some of the images and, and beyond. Um, today I'm not going to use any exposure compensation no. at all. No. Um, shutter speed wise interestingly um, the shots where the kite is down on the ground um, and then lifting away from the ground I was able to have uh, shutter speeds as slow as a thousandth of a second. Yeah. But when they were diving, which is kind of the shots we're going for, um, when they invert and they dive down, um, two thousandth of a second wasn't wasn't fast enough, I don't think, in, in some instances. So I think today where I can, 
and where the conditions allow I'm going to push that shutter speed probably up to nearly the three thousandth of a second mark. Well, it, it's it's a trade-off, isn't it? Because if you go in these weather conditions, you go up to that, you're going to push your ISO through the roof. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yesterday we were sh uh, talk about aperture as well. We were shooting at yeah. f8 yesterday because yeah. we were, you know, trying to make sure the entire body, and um, from wingtip to wingtip of the kites was was in in focus. Um, today I'm shooting wide open at f4 um, mm. because the light isn't there that we had yesterday. So rather than closing the aperture down, increasing the depth of field, I'm having a wider aperture, um, sh speed. shallower depth of field, and then increasing my shutter speed as a result yeah. of that. Yeah. And I think you're probably right. I think that the trade-off is going to be higher ISO um, in some of the images than we got yesterday. I mean, in some of the images yesterday, I was down at 64 ISO. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I don't think we're going to get that. So I don't want to have that luxury today. But I think, you know, that's that's all part of wildlife photography. You're constantly, with the available light, playing that trade-off game of increasing your shutter speed because you need the fast shutter speeds, particularly when you're photographing fast birds like this, um, playing with aperture and seeing what you can get away with. Um, I mean, ultimately, I think, as long as you, the eye of the bird is tack sharp, you're laughing. Um, but I, th I felt F8 was a little bit, a little bit too narrower aperture uh, yesterday yeah and also I, I noticed that um you know when they were going past the trees it was a little bit too busy behind the vocal wasn't that good yeah um and a bit of a distraction yeah yeah but, uh, i i will say i mean you and i have a slight di disagreement um but i think this new denoise uh, ai on La lightroom this latest upload i think is a revelation I mean, I've got Topaz as well, um, and I've used both. I think they're just as good as each other, and uh, it does does offer you a, an alternative. Yeah, you I, disagree. I disagree. Yeah, I disagree. Yeah. I, we're we're allowed to disagree. Absolutely, now, of course we are. I, I find that the, uh, the 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 denoise in in Lightroom make, it creates a little bit of a painterly effect. You know, there are some some textures that you want, particularly in feathers, which look a little bit like paintings. Um, with the Lightroom, you can get that with Topaz as well. If you if you sorry, I've had it with Topaz. Yeah, if you over egg the pudding, you know, it, it, you can get that in Topaz. But I don't feel it does it quite as much. Um, but we'll put photographs on of both Pops and I, and and you know, you can you can have a look. But Pops will, we'll perhaps put on whether we've used Topaz or whether we've used Lightroom mm. Um, mm. In, in the description, and then and then you, the viewer, can make your mind up on that as well. It, it may well be, to be honest with you, son. I I will try it with both ways, and if I think the topaz is better, then I'll use that. It will be. <laughs> Possibly not. <laughs> so the tractor's just arrived. It's a bit like waiting for Christmas and seeing Santa coming down the road on his sleigh. <laughs> <laughs> so the tractor arrives. There must be well over 200 kites above us now. Um, and they know that what that tractor means. They know that that means that it's feeding time, um, and things go from nice, sedate, and calm to crazy in a matter of moments. I mean, they're just building and building and building. It's like Alfred Hitchcock's The Birds. <laughs> so I'm gonna I'm gonna press my GoPro. You can watch what's gonna happen, and I'm gonna try and get the shot. As I'm sure you are too, Pops. I'm definitely trying. Pretty much the same as yesterday. The initial waves are just overwhelming. There's just so many birds coming down. 
it's almost impossible to uh, to identify and single out a subject and after a while it just starts to thin out and that's what kind of the phase we're in now there's still plenty of food out on the grass for them so there'll be plenty more dives but what's been incredible today that we've not had before is there's, there's been a leucistic uh, kite so it was almost pure white um, and I, I've tracked that for probably 10-15 minutes and hopefully if I've got something decent I'll pop it up on the screen now for you to see So what I'm doing here is I'm picking out a subject and then tracking it and resisting the temptation when all the rest of the action is taking place to deviate from that and just to keep tracking. And then the hope is, as I begin to follow this, eventually it dives and that's how you get in the shot. So there you have it, two days at Gigrin. We're absolutely exhausted. We've probably taken probably 12,000 photographs between the two of us <laughs> over the two days. Or oh, easily. Uh, <laughs> so we've got a fair bit of editing ahead of us. Um, but what a fantastic experience. I've been to a number of red kites uh, feeding stations up and down the country and I have to say, none of them come close to Gigrin. It is just absolutely spectacular. You think, think so, Pops? Absolutely, it's awesome. Awesome. If you've never been, get yourself down here. It's fantastic. Well, if we've got anything decent, we'll pop it up on the screen at the end if we've not already popped it up on the screen for you. And until next time, ta-da! Ta